In a distant time, God dwelled in a formless world shrouded in darkness. He hovered over the imperial waters, and in a sublime moment, God spoke the words that echo eternally, let there be light. And so it was. Light emerged, and God saw that it was good. He separated light from darkness, revealing his divine power. However, a fundamental theological question persists, where did God come from? When heaven and earth were nothing more than a promise, when darkness reigned over a shapeless void, God already existed. He majestically dwelt alone in his divine greatness. He called light out of darkness, brought order out of chaos, and created a cosmos out of confusion. But the incessant question remained, where did God come from? Some assert that God created the earth 6,000 years ago in just six days. However, to be philosophically consistent and honest, the question arises, where did God come from? Furthermore, once we understand the origin of God, how can we comprehend the influence of a spiritual force on a material universe? If it is believed that God created the universe, logic leads us to question, who created God? And so begins the endless cycle of inquiries, who created God, and who created the God who created God? The quest for truth extends to infinity, challenging our minds and leading us to question the depths of the unknown. Let's delve deeper into the question, who created God? When we ask this question, we immediately encounter the idea of a created God, which is intriguing. This inquiry in itself illustrates a crucial point, that belief in God as the Creator is fundamental to our understanding. However, this question is intriguing because it leads us to consider a more plausible explanation, the impossibility of something arising from nothing. If we agree that it is not possible to create something from an absolute void, we arrive at a powerful conclusion, there must be something eternal, always existing, for otherwise, we would be trapped in eternal emptiness. Therefore, all of us, in some way, are forced to believe that something has always existed. This is the only logical explanation, for if we accept that nothing can arise from nothing, then both you and I, who are here discussing, are something, and that something must have existed forever. The idea of something eternal, ever-present, is the key to understanding the enigma of creation. Here is the question, everything we know about the physical world leads us to doubt that something can exist eternally. Especially since the 1930s, when the Big Bang theory was widely accepted, our understanding of the universe has changed, drastically. This theory suggests that our current universe is just a temporal manifestation, a single iteration in an infinite series. Consider the evidence, the universe is constantly changing, energy is gradually being consumed, and the well-established second law of thermodynamics teaches us that energy depletes over time. Stars are losing their energy, and the expansion of the universe seems to be accelerating, pushing its boundaries beyond our comprehension. All of this leads us to conclude that the physical world as we know it is not a viable candidate for something that has existed eternally. Now, the big question is, whatever has existed eternally must be entirely different from what we see today. The primordial cause, the source of everything, must be something beyond our current understanding. And so we are challenged to explore the true nature of this mystery that transcends our physical world. I recognize that the idea of something existing eternally may seem challenging, but I would like to present a different perspective. Consider that everything we perceive as contingent reality, meaning things that could be otherwise, are just fleeting manifestations. Even seemingly solid objects, like a chair, were once merely possibilities on the brink of non-being. They are not permanent, they vanish over time. The truth is that all these things cannot explain themselves. They are interconnected like domino pieces in a chain of interdependent contingencies. At some point, we must assume that there is something fundamental, something entirely different from what we are trying to explain. However, when it comes to God, the central claim of Christian, 
Jewish, and Islamic traditions is that God is eternal. Therefore, the question about the origin of God does not apply to him by definition. The only way to argue against this is to assume that everything belongs to the category of created, but that simply puts us back to square one. The ancient Greeks explored this question, and that's why the Gospel of John begins with the words, in the beginning was the word. This statement invites us to consider that all things have their origin in something eternal and transcendental, something beyond our understanding, something that already existed before everything. Ancient Greeks were interested in the question of two categories, what is created and what already exists. Ultimately, this question boils down to whether there is something or someone who never came into existence. Christians claim that this being is God, and this assertion is central to their faith. The question of who created God may seem legitimate to some, but I argue that it is not. Now, for those who believe that the universe created everything, I want to pose a question, who created the creator of the universe? This question often leaves people perplexed. The question of who created God, in reality, is not as complex as it may seem. When we refer to God as an eternal and timeless being, the answer becomes clear. As Keith Ward argues in his book God, Chance, and Necessity, if someone were to ask what caused God, the answer would be simple, nothing could have brought into existence a reality that completely transcends, space and time, that is self-existent. Understanding this idea is to understand that God is beyond the categories of beginning and end. Anything that begins to exist needs a cause, it cannot arise from nothing. However, something that is eternal and timeless does not fit into this initial premise, it does not need a cause. Even atheists like Daniel Dennett acknowledge that if eternal truths exist, such as numbers or mathematical objects, they do not need a cause because they never come into existence. The concept of God is precisely the concept of an eternal and self-existent being, a primal necessity. Therefore, the answer is simple, God has no cause because he is self-existent. Our definition of God is the uncreated creator of the universe who transcends all limitations of time and space. The question of who created the uncreated creator is like asking about the sound of silence or what emptiness does. What I am trying to illustrate is that there is a definition of silence that prevents us from asking such a question. Similarly, when we question who created the uncreated creator of the universe, we are following a line of reasoning that does not apply to him. This brings us to an important point, Christians base their beliefs on a God who was not created, while atheists often provide different answers. Regardless of what it is, the idea is that the universe was not created. Therefore, ultimately everyone believes in the existence of an uncreated creator. Considering that we all have this belief in an uncreated creator, perhaps the essential question is how this creator relates to our continuum of time, space, and matter. Here is the crux of the matter, all these elements, time, space, and matter, must have come into existence at the same time. If there were space but no time, where would you place it? And if there were matter in space but no time, when would you place it? It is not possible to separate time, space, and matter, they must coexist. The Bible addresses this issue concisely in just ten words, in the beginning, God created the heavens, space, and the earth, matter. Therefore, time and space were created along with matter. These three elements form an essential trinity, time encompasses the past, present, and future, space has length, width, and height, matter exists in the states of gas, liquid, and solid. This trinity of the trinity was created instantly, and the God who created them must be beyond them, transcending all temporal limitations. If God were subject to time, he would not truly be God, for he would be restricted by his own creation. The creator of the computer is not trapped inside the computer manipulating numbers on the screen. Similarly, the God who created this universe is not bound by it. He is beyond, 
above, and through the universe. He is not affected by it. Now, when it comes to Dan's claim that a spiritual force cannot have any effect on a material body, it raises some intriguing questions. How do we explain emotions, love, hate, envy, jealousy, and rationality? If our brain is just a random collection of chemicals formed over billions of years, how can we trust our own reasoning processes and our perceptions of what is right? This means that God is not limited by any place or form. His presence is omnipresent and transcends all boundaries. So, did he come from nothing? The reason God came from nothing is that there was no place for him to come from or where to come from. He did not emerge from anywhere. And the reason he had to stand on nothing is that there was nowhere for him to stand. He stretched out his hand when there was nothing to grasp and hung something where there was nothing to hang. Now, if you look at the book of Genesis in chapter 1 verse 26 and 27, you will see that he hung this world on nothing and stood on nothing. He took the hammer of his own will and picked up the anvil of his omnipotence. Sparks flew, and he caught them on the tips of his fingers and cast them into space, adorning the heavens with stars. And no one said a word. No one contested, there was no one to contest. Then God himself said, this is good, and God gave Christ a name above every name so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So, regardless of individual beliefs, one thing is clear, our ability to understand the truth about God and the universe is limited. The idea of an uncreated creator, a God beyond time, space, and matter, challenges our understanding but also reminds us of the grandeur of the unknown. Ultimately, the search for truth is a personal and spiritual journey, and each of us can find meaning and purpose in our own way. We explore perspectives that invite reflection, expand thought, and acknowledge divine transcendence. Regardless of where you are on your spiritual journey, I hope these discussions have inspired an appreciation for the complexity and beauty of the universe and the mystery that surrounds divinity. If you enjoyed this message, please share it with your friends and family and subscribe to my channel. May God bless you. Together, we can enlighten more minds and expand our understanding.